Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. Hello and welcome to Gamer TV. Coming up, we'll be hanging with Earthworm Jim gaming legend Dave Perry. And we travel to Hollywood to see how the stars of the silver screen are getting in on the Games Act. It's not an easy job. Absolutely not an easy job to attach celebrities to video games. We'll be reviewing Alias, NBA Ballers and Far Cry. And we'll be previewing Soccer Life for We Are Challengers to Europe and Nitro family. First though, let's get the latest stories from the games world. Remember when we thought Black Mesa was as bad as it could get? Half-Life 2 has finally been given a release date of September 2004. After a succession of delays, the game was due to come out earlier this year, but just weeks before its release, a serious hacking incident resulting in the theft of the game's source code put the release date back even further. There you are. I wondered what was keeping you. In a recent interview, Valve co-founder Gabe Newell admitted that production costs have spiralled to a staggering $40 million. With stout competition already out there from the likes of Far Cry and the soon-to-arrive Doom 3, we not only hope Half-Life 2 is worth the wait, we hope it's worth the money too. No, no, there's nothing to be nervous about. Time now for our previews. Later on in the show, we'll be joining the Nitro family. But first up, it's the snappily titled Soccer Life, We Are Challengers to Europe. Apparently, the Japanese have a theory that to produce the sort of players capable of rivaling the Europeans, you not only have to manage their career, but their girlfriends, their children, in fact, every aspect of their lives. Hence this title, the optimistically named Soccer Life, We Are Challengers to Europe. The only football management game in history where you choose the player's underpants. Joke, sorry. After you meet your agent and your new coach, your first task will be to peruse the list of bushy-tailed teenagers in the hope of unearthing the next footballing legend. Of course, it's at this point you'll start to drown in statistics. With Banpresto promising five European leagues, 113 clubs and 3,000 players, there's an awful lot of number crunching to be done before you can get on the circuit and sell your little charges to the highest bidder. Then, and only then, do you get into the matches themselves. Although, if you're of an impatient nature, you can ignore the game's campaign mode, set up an exhibition match in versus mode, and just watch. Play itself is looking nicely rendered so far. There are realistic elements, like England players missing goals, as well as not-so-realistic elements, like England beating Brazil. Football management fans are a weird lot, let's face it. But if you can wait for a translation, or you can speak Japanese, Soccer Life is looking like one of the most comprehensive sims ever. Just you wait for the Drunk in a Nightclub add-on pack. Now then, film and television, as we all know, means big business, and so does the games industry. So it makes sense that the three should collide now and again. We went to find out how. Hollywood is famous for its actors and its filmmakers, but the stars of the silver and small screen are now becoming the voices of video games, thanks to some very motivated people. 
Lev Chapelsky, General Manager. Matt Case, Director of Development. Don Hershey, Executive Director of Casting. Wine Light. There must be something in her apartment that'll give us a glimpse into her past. Yeehaw! It's rude to keep a lady waiting. I'm sorry, that was what was going on in the bathroom this morning. <laughs> Blind Light provides access to Hollywood talent and production services for video game producers. It's not an easy job to attach celebrities to video games. I'm trying to concentrate. Celebrities are used to being paid celebrity rate fees for their work. Video game budgets don't afford those same fees. That's the biggest challenge. Sorry girls, I'd love to dance, but I gotta run. Hollywood smells cash. And I think at the end of the day, most of the move from Hollywood to games is not motivated by creative energy or by the desire to make the industry better or more interesting, but out of an understanding that they're looking for new places to exploit their talent. Bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. Bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. Agents get television, agents get film. They understand what it is, they get the cultural phenomenon. That isn't translated into games. It's hard for them to have that same basic understanding of the medium. If there's a lot of old school agents out there who, when they get my phone call, they say, honey, what did you say? Video game? I'm sorry, we don't do that. Click. David Duchovny is a good example. I would say there were probably 75 to 100 go-rounds of offers to fill that role. Jones, finally. I feel like I've spent three months inside a tin can. So Hollywood and its agents are still working out how valuable video games can be for actors. But do the games companies know how to deal with Hollywood? They're great at creating worlds. They're great at creating avatars. They're great at creating gameplay. Um, they don't really have a core competency in the production business of working with actors. That was real fun, General. But isn't it time you told me who I am? Maybe just uh, try one more, a little more okay. energetic. You're no longer tired and beaten down. That was real fun, General. But isn't it time you told me who I am? Sometimes they're long shots of crazy ideas of way too expensive actors for way too low budget of a game, and it doesn't quite work out. But we approach everybody, and we never really say no. We, we always ask. We should run a search on the identification using the computer in the lab and find out everything you can about how Garvey was killed. We've done quite a bit of work on CSI. We had to get the top eight actors from the television series to perform in the game. Catherine Willows, Las Vegas Crime Lab. I'm Captain Jim Brass. Greg Sanders. I'm Gil Grissom. I'm Ward Brown. Albert Robbins, welcome aboard. Even high profile actors who haven't done video games yet are saying, this is something I have to try, this is something I have to do. To know that I'll be immortalized in some character in a game, that's fantastic. So what's the story here, Doc? So are things changing? Will Hollywood start to share its talent with the games business? And will actors want to be in video games? Celebrities are more likely to be attracted to a property when they recognize that somebody of, from their own world is participating in it. If we're going after eight actors for CSI, seven sign on, there's an awful lot of implicit pressure on that eighth. Glad you could come aboard CSI. It was getting kind of old being a new kid myself. It's a unique occurrence, and you're having people from Hollywood really take it seriously and include it as part of their plan for how they take over the world via entertainment. So Lev, Matt and Dawn are successfully promoting the idea of actors participating in video games. But what else does the future hold for Blind Light? I think that a big opportunity for us in the future is going to be really thinking about story as can be contributed from, say, professional screenwriters or people that we work with that are, have had one foot in both camps for quite some time and really understand that space in between linear entertainment and interactive entertainment. I mean, come on! Every time the world needs saving, nobody's around. Good thing we are. Review time now on Gamer TV. Under the microscope today, we have NBA Ballers and Far Cry. But first up, we're going undercover with Alias. We've got a sneaking suspicion that the designers of this game spent a little too much time watching footage of Jennifer Garner. Fair enough, but how do we know? Well, the video game version of the hit show Alias is certainly accurate. It's just not very good. All the right elements are here, sure. The digital Sydney will be called upon to infiltrate casinos and spike drinks. Fight masked enemies with ancient weapons. 
hack into about 75 computers. Sweet. Now, hack into the computer. And tiptoe along roof girders. That's all fine, but missions are hamstrung by some sloppy ideas. Back up. And a noticeable lack of playtesting. Enemy AI is largely appalling, and we fought countless battles where the rest of the bad guys just stood around and watched. Maybe it's the Jennifer Garner thing again. There's also way too many save points, virtually one after every puzzle. Some people will like this, but it does nothing for a player's sense of achievement or the flow of the game. The puzzles themselves are rudimentary. In fact, some can be ignored altogether. What stealth game do you know where triggered alarms turn themselves back off in a matter of seconds? It's not all bad. There are some nicely detailed graphics to be savoured and we did like the boss battle with the frying pan. Ultimately, however, this title is too simplistic and just too darn clunky for us to recommend it. It gets two stars. Of course, if Jennifer wants to call me and discuss it further... I don't have a keycard. Any suggestions? Time to hit the court for a little one-on-one -on -one now. Basketball superstars enjoy a multi-millionaire lifestyle filled with palatial mansions, flash cars and glittering jewellery. They didn't just fall into the lap of luxury though, most started shooting hoops on the streets. In Midway's NBA Ballers for the PS2 and Xbox, if you've got the skills to climb the ranks, you can become one of basketball's big earners. You play a young hopeful who's a contestant on the reality TV game show, NBA Ballers, Rags to Riches. Winning tournaments earns you respect from the pros and, much more importantly, a pile of glamorous prize bling. Other modes include standard and online versus options, so you can prove your superior hoop shooting talents to your friends. The one-on-one -on -one format eliminates the need to pass. Stealing the ball from your opponent is vital as you frantically chase them around the court, blocking their shots and pulling off as many showboating special moves as your juice meter will allow. NBA Ballers' rewarding career progression and slick arcade gameplay make it an enjoyable alternative to standard basketball games. It lands three stars. Still to come on Gamer TV, we snoop around game god Dave Perry's house. It says theater, but it's not a theater at all. It's a game room. And we'll get an exclusive look at Nitro Family. Don't go away. Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. Ladies, glad you made it. As the season reaches its climax, don't miss Fascist Football Challenge, Friday at 10, only on Bravo. Wouldn't it be nice to roll back time? At Asda, this Easter, you can, with our biggest ever price cuts. We're rolling back Easter eggs, like Cadbury, Mars and Kit Kat, from £5 to £4 for three. It's our lowest price ever, so you can get more at yesterday's prices. We can't do magic, but we can really lower prices. That's Asda Price. Polysale's new base coat for cracked, patchy walls. For a really smooth finish, it's the perfect start. Polysale, it only takes two ticks. Have you been injured, had an accident at work, or on the road, or in a public place? Unsure if you have a claim for compensation, concerned about hidden charges? Now, there is no need to worry. The Personal Injury Helpline will handle your claim with no charges, 
and nothing taken from the money you're awarded. So, for a risk-free quality service, call us free now on 0800 085 1715. If you don't make the call, you'll never know. Time to renew your car insurance. Smart people. Budget! To see if you can save without compromising on cover, call free on 0800 247 247. Hello, are you losing sleep over your finances? Well, you don't have to go to the bank for a low-cost loan. Why not see if it's easier, faster and cheaper to call Lombard Direct on 0800 2 15,000? Your rate is based on your circumstances and loan amount. Our typical rate is just 6.1% APR. For an unsecured personal loan of up to £25,000, call Lombard Direct on 0800 2 15,000 or apply online at LombardDirect.com. You know, you really should get yourself a new mint card. Trust me, I'd love to. It's just that, uh, well, my hamster, he's a bit partial to the new shape. It's got a brilliant rate. 0% until October on both new purchases and balance transfers. The go-to rate is just 10.9% APR. And when you use your card, you even get cash back on the stuff you buy. Go on, give him a call on 0800 10 20... 20. Call 0800 10 20 20. Get more. Get mint. You need a seriously good reason not to. Join us on a journey inside the mind of Hollywood star Gary Busey. Ah! He's part-time philosopher. Technology is going to be developed that will be able to kill your mother. Part-time musician. <laughs> Full-time crazy. I'm going to take these corks and I'm going to jam them in the butt of the cow so they can't fart. I forgot to bring Vaseline. <laughs> Enter the bizarre world of Gary Busey in I'm With Busey. Tonight at 11.30, only on Bravo. <laughs> Get up to speed and transform your gaming experience with Blue Yonder Broadband Internet. We're back with loads more to get through, but first, time for this. In the fickle world of fashion, the focus is on the futuristic. Wearable technology hit the catwalks of the 2004 3GSM Mobile Technology Expo in Cannes and was billed as a unique opportunity to see how the latest technology will become integrated into our lifestyles. In other words, strap pieces of technology to various parts of your body and try to look cool and connected. But is this just a concept or is this the future? I think it's really the right time to start addressing this, this issue of personalizing the technology. And it isn't just about uh, stuffing more and more into a mobile phone. In fact, it's more about exploding the mobile phone into pieces and letting people wear the parts and the functionalities they need. Hmm, OK then. Looks like we'll all be fighting over next season's computer hats and mouse earrings if they make the leap from the catwalk to the high street. We've got one more review lined up for you on Gamer TV, and this week we've been mostly playing Far Cry. The tropics, lush waxy foliage, clear blue skies, the sea, and oh yeah, did we mention the heavily armed mercenaries with adrenal glands the size of Arnie's biceps? Well, nobody told Jack Carver either, and it's not every day you wake up to find everybody's trying to kill you. So begins Far Cry, a game that's set to do the unthinkable this year, give Doom 3 and Half-Life 2 a run for their money. This is a first-person shooter that's not only technically impressive, but genuinely beautiful. It's the sheer scale of the game that grabs you. Jack can snipe enemies from seemingly huge distances plunge through stretches of ocean and send enemy gunners tumbling from their helicopters. That's not to say the graphics lack detail either, whether patrolling derelict ships or simply soaking up the sun. Far Cry creates an atmosphere light years away from standard PC techno gloom. Vehicles are all the rage in first-person shooters this year and there are plenty to be found here. There are jeeps and boats everywhere. Not to mention our favourite, the hang glider. It'll take hours for them to restore their systems to normal. 
combat will drag you from beach hut to treehouse to creepy laboratory. The fighting will be intense, but don't worry, the enemy's only human, isn't it? Throw in an attractive sense of humour and we're left with a game that could reasonably be described as the most cinematic PC title yet seen. It gets four stars and it's going to need them. Stiff competition lies just around the corner. Time now on Gamer TV for another episode in the occasional series where we visit an unsuspecting game giant and snoop around their house. This time it's Shiny's very own Dave Perry. Behind the walls of this grand house in a leafy suburb of California lies the brains behind all of these games. I'm David Perry. Welcome to my home. Come on in. The most important room in the house is this room. This, this is, it says theater, but it's not a theater at all. It's a game room. This is where I play all my video games. I have a lot of different games machines here. I have my Xbox, PlayStation 2, GameCube. But, you know, those will soon be PlayStation 2, Xbox 2, so these guys go up to the attic. I have an attic full of old video game machines. We have a river down here. The river um, is real nice, you know, there's no fish in it, but it's real nice to listen to when you're sitting reading a book. And then we have a goose here, and I have absolutely no idea why we have a goose in a wheelbarrow in our living room. But you can ask my wife about that. This is the main kitchen area. This is where I do all my heating. I don't do any cooking at all, but this is the perfect place to heat food. The fridge is full of, um, well, mostly stuff you can heat in the microwave, and um, there's some really nice, um, I guess, lollipops they say in England, or popsicles here in America. You can see down here we have um, we have surfers at 6 o'clock in the morning, they're out there. It doesn't matter if it's raining. It, at night time, in the moonlight, I still see the heads out there surfing. I can't play piano, so the best thing to do in that, in that scenario is to buy a piano that can play itself for you. So I can literally just press a button, and then I can pretend to play. <laughs> Hello, Angel. Here's my, um, my helicopter. Um, Shiny did a video game called um, RC Stunt Copter once. This was the actual star of the video game. The problem is that I've flown it a bunch of times and I never broke it, so now I'm scared to fly it because I know at some point, statistically, I'm just gonna smash this thing to pieces. So right now, it just hangs in my garage. Okay, now this is one of the most important things when you're married is you have to have a room somewhere, right? That you can go to and be alone. <laughs> This is my room where I do electronics. I can make little robots and, and this kind of stuff. It's also where I have my home networking. But the goal is, is to have one gigabit ethernet everywhere so I can share video files, data from room to room. I can watch anything from anywhere. It's great. This is my wife, Elaine. If you come this way, Here's the bedroom. Being tall, the one thing I love about this home is everything is very tall. You can see we have high ceilings, we have high doors wherever you go, and I have a huge monster bed. When, when you're laying in bed in the morning, all you can see is just ocean. A good friend of mine is a guy called um, Tommy Tallarico. 
I've known Tommy since I first came to America. We worked on the video game um, Aladdin, Global Gladiators, Cool Spot, and games like that. You can see him here, you know, this is, these are our real bodies, of course. So I think we're about done. I think we've, um, I think we've shown you everything. Thanks very much for coming. Elaine, you need to keep the dogs quiet. Nearly time to bring another show to a close, but there's just enough time for one more preview. We're in the family way for this one, the Nitro family. Here's an unusual concept. Victor and Maria have had their baby kidnapped and instead of notifying the proper authorities, Maria's going to jump on her husband's back and together they're gonna kill anything that moves. I'm not sure Oprah can help with this one. Still, it all looks rather fun, especially as Victor has access to a huge amount of heavy artillery. In Nitro Family, cartoon mayhem rules. Victor can handle two guns simultaneously, and while the combination of shotgun and rocket launcher seems to be the most effective, you might prefer a machine gun or even a second rocket launcher. Enemies will include drug-addled peasants, pigs, chickens, and fat women in their pants. Victor can juggle opponents with shotgun blasts or eliminate entire tides of baddies with a single rocket. See you soon. Maria has her own role to play. She's able to launch herself into the air for devastated bombing runs, particularly effective against giant babies. If enemies get too close, however, the little lady also has a whip to decapitate them with. The game, developed by Delphi Entertainment, has yet to secure a publisher in Western Europe or America. We're sure it will, because Nitro Family is promising to be one of the funniest shoot-em-ups in gaming history. That's all we have for you on this Gamer TV. We'll leave you with more from the Nitro Family. See you next time. Okay, let's find our baby. Upgrade weapon. You don't have enough credit. Bye. See you again.